people. So if people get benefit of seeing the recording, that's good. Or if they want to, let's say, want to have a session at a separate time that's more convenient for more people, that's also fine with us. You know, whatever works for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, interact with Daga. People usually when they go through the topics, they will have questions, So interact with them. Usually people learn more on that. So recording other, it's like any other thing, right? And after 10 minutes, you lose focus. But but that's fine. Whatever works for everyone, that's fine with us. So uh, topics only. So we thought we'll cover some core topics. Again, each of this uh, is, is a big topic by itself. Now, usually in Marti Vindra, when we do one-on-one -on -one consultation, you know, we, we sit with the families and, and go through their situations and then see the areas where, um, you know, we need the focus. Uh, we will talk about the um, you know, financial planning concept and life insurance, long-term care, college planning, uh, wills and trusts. So, those are the topics we pick. Those are the, uh, the popular topics. So we always start with the, the disclaimer again, you know, um, we do these kind of education sessions all the time, you know, do your homework um, and, um, you know, buy, buy financial product that, that meets your needs. So if you need help with those things, you, know, you can always come back to us and we can, we can help out. So we'll start with the, what we call as the foundation of financial planning. So, Whenever we talk about financial planning, you know, I say this all the time. Um, so when you part in you know, uh, financial planning, the first thing people ask is, you know, have you invested in Google stock, you know, Apple stock, or any other um, stocks that you can think of? So what we say is there's always the last step in the, in the financial planning. So it's like building the house. You start with the foundation. So start with the proper protection. Then you know managing the debt, then um, emergency fund management, and then then the investment part comes. So it's not the first thing um, when you think about financial planning. It's it's the last thing. Um, and when we talk about proper protection, so especially in the Indian community, before health, just before we started the start call, you know we are all very successful. You know, you know, if you look at as any immigrant community, Indians are the, the most prosperous one and other things. But one thing we notice is when we talk to the families, one on one situation, you know, a lot of the, the basic um, you know, protections are not covered, basic planning is not done. So, um, you know, whenever there is, you know, you WhatsApp and Bharate, Facebook and Bharate, you know, go for me. Huh? So, whenever you see those incidents, you know, recent one was like a 33 year old in, in California um, and didn't have any protection. Then they were doing the go for me to send the body back to India. So whenever you hear about those things, you really, you know, I really cry. Um, we should, you know, with, with uh, maybe what they would have paid for a, you know, Starbucks coffee every day, if they bought some protection, then probably that would have covered for, for the life. So that's why we always say proper protection is where you start. So we're going to cover a little bit of detail on the long-term care and the life insurance today and also on the estate planning. And, but these things are your foundation. Make sure you have it, you know, you have the proper coverage. If something were to happen to the breadwinner or you know, any family member, um, the others are taken care of. So that's the most important thing. So um, we had a sad incident that happened in our community where I live, say a Connecticut family. So, you know, family goes through all this grief and other things and financial burden is, is you know, that's, that's a long-term thing. You know, that, that um, pain will not go away. So that's why we say, start with your protection, you know, make sure, you know, you're covered. Second thing is the debt management. Generally, you know, we as Indians are very conservative in our, in our spending. You know, we tend to save more than the ordinary Americans, but still we need to be aware of um, the cash flow and, and debt management. 
um, you know, wherever savings is possible, especially, you know, things like regular things, the, the cable and the internet and other things, there's always, you know, possibility to save more. Um, and, you know, if there is mortgage, for example, you know, we know that in the recent time, it started, you know, rates have started going up, but before that, it was good opportunity to refinance and, and reduce the debt there. Yeah and avoiding the the credit card debt so that's one of the one of the key thing and the other thing is you know when you're helping your children with the with, with their college so we always advise parents first look at your situations and see whether you are in a situation to help your your kids the, the reason for that is if you think about you know lifespan where you are uh, if the kids when they're 22, 23, whatever, uh, if they graduate and if they have um, debt, they have another 40 years to pay back. And in, in, in some cases, it is also true that, you know, you have all this government assistance. And there could be, uh, you know, debt being paid off, paid off and other situations. Never know what happens with the, with the government program. So they may get benefit of, out of that. Uh, even otherwise, uh, they have much longer time to think about this and pay back uh, compared to you may be much closer to the retirement. So um, we're not saying you should not help, but uh, think about your personal situation now. Think about your retirement planning. Think about your coverage for long-term care. And then if you can afford to pay, you know, that's that, that's really good. You know, sometimes it's, it's very emotional when you think about we all benefited from the education that, and we want to do the best for our kids. Uh, but at the same time, we had to be pragmatic also when it comes to financial planning. The third thing is uh, emergency fund. Uh, again, generally our guidance is have about six months of monthly expenses. So that's where uh, even the debt management, think about the cash flows and see how much you spend in a month and have about six months of uh, that money set aside. This should be available to, to uh, readily, um, you know, if, if you need for any emergency, you won't, you won't be able to access that money. So you could keep that in a brokerage account or checking or savings. Um, there could also be a opportunity to get some return out of that. You know, if you put that in the checking account, we know that you get, you know, less than, let's say, 0.1% or something. Uh, there are places, um, you know, where uh, we have managed account with, uh, with fund managers who could give a little bit more more uh, interest on that? It could be in you know, a five to eight percent range, so depending on how much risk you want to take. So um, you should always think about those um, because you are setting that money money aside. If you think about, you know, you always have some money available for emergency. You know, how do we grow that? Right. So it's always a question. The, the last part I was talking about in the foundations is the investment. Um, so why do you need to make the investment, right? So what happens if you don't make the investment in, let's say, market or something? So one thing is if you keep the money in, I'm going to talk about that, uh, the impact of inflation. So in the past few years, when we talk about inflation, it was like after that, people didn't care because inflation was always, you know, two, three percent in the last many years. But this year, you know, when we talk about inflation, people do pay attention. Look at the gas prices, for example, compared to last year, you know, last couple of years, or you know, when you go to the groceries, you you see that the prices has gone up. So if you keep the money in the bank and if it is not growing, then the value of the dollar is going down, right? So that's why we had to make sure that it's going at least in par with the with the inflation, so you can keep the the value of the money same. You need to have proper uh, safety and protection when you make the investment. And you should always think about what is the tax implication of your investment. Uh, you know, I will be showing this um, this um, graph later on. You know, what happens in the tax now bracket and tax deferred and tax later. So we'll be showing you different um, um, investment that is in you know different buckets. I will show the comparisons. Um, and you should always think about what is the actual rate of return. So when you when you do your calculation. Um, for example, there could also be a dividend that is coming back that adds to your, your returns. You know, it's just not, let's say, the stock has gone up 5%, there is another 3% dividend of the stock, so your net um, return is 8%. So think about the actual rate of return. 
and the common strategy people use dollar cost average what it means is let's say you are buying um index fund so um, probably most of you are familiar with index fund and so if you think about s p 500 index these are the 500 biggest company is in us and when you put the money in it goes through all 500 companies um so when you let's say you start putting in hundred dollar a month so then it gets invested in the 500 companies and market goes up and down but overall your average cost will be will be good for the investment cycle so that's that's what is um, meant by dollar cost averaging um then thinking about the retirement you know this formula 10 20 so we'll go through a little, little bit of detail later um, in simple terms what it means is everybody asks you know, how much insurance i should have it's generally 10 times your your um, annual income um, and then how much retirement savings you should have that's generally 20 times your annual income so that's again rule of thumb it, it, it's different for different people depends on um, where you are in your um, you know life cycle um, and what are your commitments commitments and other things there's a worksheet that um, Jyoti will show show later um, risk versus reward you know always when we talk to the families we'll, we'll assess their risk appetite right you know somebody's anger and say i want to be um i want to take a little bit more risk then we know that they can they can recover they have a lot more time to do that versus somebody closer to retirement you need to be you know taking less risk in your investment you should always look into alternate investment options and uh, manage the account so personally myself i don't man even though i got a lot of market experience and financial market experience i have somebody to manage my my um, financial investment in the stock market the reason is if i do it myself i may not get um, access to some of the alternate options like for example debt equities um, and then close funds um, pre-ipo offerings those kinds of things i may not be having that access as an individual investor if I go uh, through a managed account, I could. The other thing is, when you're managing your, your own money, you may be a little bit more emotional when you make the investment decisions. If you give it to a third party, you know, it could be less emotional. It's more based on the facts. So that, that always helps. So we'll talk about a couple of um, rules or, or interesting things to think about uh, when you're thinking about the uh, the, the financial planning this rule of 72 what it means is how long it takes to double your money so if um, let's say you put in um, you know one percent interest on a thousand dollar it takes 72 years to double the money whereas if you get four percent return it takes 18 years if you get six percent returns it takes 12 years to double the money so that's why uh, the the return you know what you get is important you know how you how you can grow the money the second concept again i talked about inflation earlier so let's say you have a hundred dollar and you put that in the bank and you got one person it's hard to get one person nowadays let's say you assume you got one person you've grown the money to 101 and then you know then you pay taxes on that the 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 real um uh, the money that is left in is hundred dollars and 75 cents and then inflation. So generally we took three percent, but uh, this year you know it's it's closer to eight percent. So actual value of the money will be much less if you are not growing the money. So taxes and inflation that is something to keep in mind. So the last slide here on the foundations is um, you know tax now, tax later, and tax advantage. Whenever you make the investment, you need to think about the tax implication, like if it is in checking savings or if you're doing the stock and mutual funds, the trade accounts, you're paying the taxes now, meaning next year when you fail, file for the taxes, all the money you gained this year, you're, you're paying taxes on that. If you have money in the 401k, IRA, annuities, and pensions, you'll be paying the taxes later. Now, in many cases, it's tax deferred, meaning a lot of people think, you know, when you put the money in 401k, you're not paying taxes on that. That is not true. You're not paying taxes now, but when you retire, when you start drawing the money, it is come comes out as an ordinary. So you do defer the uh, the tax payment on 
on the on the money you are putting in as well as the growth that you had. The third bucket is what's called as tax advantage. Like if you have a Roth IRA account, uh, you are already paid for the money, um, and then the rest of the savings you put that in the in the, in the Roth IRA. You know, you know, there is limit on how much families can do. Uh, when you draw that money after 15 and a half, you don't pay taxes on that. Um, on 529s, uh, when the money grows, uh, you don't pay the taxes on the growth if you use the money for uh, college education. Municipal bond, uh, this is pay for your uh, local towns. Um, if they have, let's say, they want to put a new water tank, they go out and do the municipal, municipal bonds, then you don't pay taxes on them. Uh, life insurance is something that's um, not, you know, you could use that for saving the money and um, make use of the, the tax loss that is available and we'll be going through some of those details. HSI account is a good way to uh, save for the future payment of um, healthcare expenses. So I will stop here um, and uh, we could uh, give some time for the questions at the end. But if there are any immediate questions, you can ask. Otherwise, I'm asking Jyoti to share her screen. Can you make me host? I'm not able to share screen. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Jyoti. Uh, my name is Jyoti. I'm uh, based in Chicago. So thanks to Kasturi organization for hosting this session to educate our community. So this is something, you know, I heard... Uh, I do attend these kind of sessions, you know, we educate ourselves and I wanted to bring the awareness to the community. And thanks Deepavre for organizing the Zoom session and which I'm going to talk to you guys about the, you know, life insurance. You know, most people, when we talk about life insurance, they're not interested to talk. As Praveen was saying, people are interested in, a, as, you know, stocks, growing money, real estate, other things, right? Not thinking about protecting themselves. So what is important, right? Well, so that's why we go through the foundation, you know, cover your foundation before you go thinking about any investments. So life insurance is something, you know, even people do have many life insurance. They think, okay, my husband or my family have already, I, they have not even looked at it, right? We never, never go back and see what kind we have, right? So we, I, we do review them and suggest them there is a better options out there and they could move out and then get the riders into in place, right? Even old uh, policies doesn't have a flexibility. So we're happy to, you know, review existing ones or we want to happy to, you know, show you the latest options of in life insurance, right? So life insurance just don't cover only the death benefit. So, you know, even I was under the impression that, oh, why should I put money? You know, I don't get anything when I'm alive, right? So why should I, you know, when the family gets it, you know, I don't need to think about later, right? Many I was I was under impression of that, right? But life insurance nowadays, you know, people are not aware of that. It could cover three things, which uh, protection, basic protection we talk about, right? We talk about protecting ourselves for dying too soon or if living long and then becoming sick, sick right? They say if we are not able to do job, job our job from tomorrow, right? So if we get into any health situations, right, that's what the long-term care, I'm going to explain what is long-term care. So if we get into any, you know, we think, okay, we're going to have a disability income from work, right? But disability income work will give you only 60% of your salary. The another 40%, where are we having a replacement for that, right? And only, they will give you only as long as you're working. But if you stop working, you don't have a coverage. You are not protected, right? So that's why, you know, so the, it can be customized how you design the policy that you know policy can be used for investments also you could make a better investment when you how when we start the policy so that that does covers the three things uh, we for the protection layer which uh, Pravin mentioned in the beginning that's the basic foundations we start from the pro proper protection and also you can always recommend, you know, people buy like, you know, like half million, one million, two million. They don't even know how much they need to protect themselves, right? We just buy randomly, you know, 100K, 200K, but is it enough for us, right? So from the work, they say, okay, we are covered from the work. From the work, what it is giving is, it's like one to three times of your salary. Is it enough for us, right? To is it not going to be enough for living a 10 years of, you know, income, replacing uh, to a family, right? So 
that's why you know always protect outside the work don't rely on the work one because in between jobs if somebody gets into any situation they're not protected right and plus uh, let's say after they retired they want to buy a protection from life insurance but they may not be eligible plus they cannot contribute it premium will be so high so they can you know they can't afford right when you retire why are you going to get the money because we want to keep our money for retirement right so always you know we always suggest buy when you're hang when you're healthy you know when you're old age if any health situation comes people cannot qualify for life insurance right so always uh, protect yourself 10 times of our income so that you know at least 10 years of our income will be paid to the family so that they can live uh, in the 10 years with the same lifestyle right also when you're buying how much life insurance family needs it not just the breadwinner right we want both husband and wife to be protected even though spouse is not working right we use this method to calculate you know how much life insurance protection family needs right this is called dime method you know it's a very popular method so you could put all your debts in the column right uh, the spouse and the uh, person who is taking so and then 10 types of income here right 10 times of the here here 10 types even the spouse doesn't make any money you can put zero here but if they own a house there is how much left on the mortgage and it's about the responsibility right both of them there is a responsibility of paying for a mortgage and also education cost right depending on you know where the how many kids they have and where they are going to send the college you know based on the you know right now my kids are in uh, college right i pay 35k per year but that's also going to change your future right so based on what uh, you know we just predict that you know future is going to be expensive so ka double the fit even if it's a four year degree right so count that many years of education cost you needed so you can put here and then here so add all these things add or add up all these things that should be the proper protection to cover so we always you know buy you know um, let's say if you have a 100k worth of auto car you buy right you're not going to buy auto insurance for a 50k right you're going to cover full coverage for the car right you're going to buy an auto insurance to cover 100k so that's why we always say that make sure you protect yourself even people who have already like existing life insurance so you can deduct that when it comes to the let's say if they come up with a 1 million dollar if they already have a 250k coverage we deduct and then cover yourself for a 250k so we we could customize it based on how much they can contribute monthly based on that we suggest okay do you want to put into the term uh, per, uh, term policies or permanent policies right even term policies because anyway we know that you know mortgage is going to paid off in 20 years so we suggest okay if we cannot afford permanent policy you can put by term policy at least it will protect your mortgage right so based on your situ situation so you can connect with us one on one we will you know we help many families so we could design and customize it we can guide you guys what's best for you guys right so in the life insurance there are term policies me most familiar uh, you know most families familiar with the in the permanent policy whole life right so they never heard of uh, the different uh, versions of the policy right so in the whole uh, permanent fire life there is a whole life is like you know it's like a very old kind of po po policies like we have to pay for a premium i had one of these kind of policies from met life but uh, when I, I, we cannot do any customization, right? Because I had to pay, as long as I'm alive, I had to pay for the premium. And then right now, I was able to look into the latest policies where I could pay the same premium and pay for only till 65 and then done with the policy, right? So whole life is to be very olden days, uh, old policies, like a old traditional way. So then the universal life came into the market where they design, where the, you know, you could make the flexibility of paying the premium, not paying for a whole life. Next one is a variable universal life came into the market. Variable means they put money into the markets, the stocks, where you may lose money when the stock goes down, you may gain money. But then when 2008 uh, happened, a lot of people who lost the money in the variable life, universal life, where it, it all based on the stock performance. So that's why next uh, index universal life came into the market, which, you know, you will never lose your uh, uh, premium means, uh, they lock you for the flow rate where when market goes down, you don't lose. When market goes up, you gain. So that's called the index universal life. So which, that's the most common, uh, popular one for nowadays. So, so which I'm going to explain now uh, what is index universal life. 
so before that you know uh, so any life insurance right as i told you when you buy anything when we apply it based on underwriting they are going to pull all the history medical history determine whether they can you know assure you that many coverage right but health is very important and the medication history everything they're going to assess everything uh, with the being a good health and also premium is based on what rating we are going to get. If you get the top rating, that means you pay less premium. If you go down, you know, different rate classes, you go higher premium. So when you are a very good health, you know, protect yourself so that you can lock in for a life. And again, these are the difference between universal and whole life. You know that uh, universal is, you know, it's like, a, it's both are permanent policies. And right, this is again, universal is again, they put money into the index funds where, you know, it again based on the market performance where in the whole life they used to give just four percent flat interest even still many companies do sell the whole life policies people are not interested in the market right they do give a if people are interested okay just three percent four percent interest there is a whole life policies available but why the, why to put it lock in for a four percent where index giving you more than eight percent right so we all it's a some personal situation personal you know interest some people want the whole life we do have a full life but you know most popular one they want to take the higher rate of return right again both are you know this is when universal is flexible so we can design it okay you pay for a five years you pay for a 10 years and done with a, that policy for a life so in the whole life, if there is not much flexibility, you know, it's a, you, you say that, okay, when you started, you pay a 20 years, 30 years, it's fixed, right? So, our, uh, you know, you cannot customize more the premium, right? And in the death benefit, you could increase based on what money you're putting that uh, death benefit could be in, uh, going to increase. We have an option to turn on that in the universal life where here, if you buy, a, buy for a half million, it stocks for a half million dollars. Right. So, so that this is a basic explanation of, you know, universal and whole life. And uh, what is universal life? So universal life, let's say, you know, uh, put money into the, like where there is a no cap, no strategy, no floor strategy, right? Let's say if you have a hundred dollar. So company sets the, let's say, um, if there is a no cap, it's like a directly putting into the stocks, right? No cap, no strat. When the market goes up, right? In year one, it, uh, your hundred dollar becoming one one eight when market was giving you eighteen percent return. Year two when market drops like right minus fifteen, it dropped to hundred and point three. And next year year three when market went up, it compounded. You know, it's like where it was there, right? Ten percent from where it was balanced, right? Ten percent up. And then next year when market goes down, you go last minus five, right? So basically if there is no cap, no floor, that's the directly investing into index funds where your money is becoming $100 to $104. Then you have to, this is a taxable, you have to, again, you have to pay tax on it, right? So, but the same $100, if you put it in an index universal life where, Elon, let's say there is a, you know, each company has a different index fund. So we could pick and choose what's, uh, you know, based on the cap and the flow, right? Most uh, common was in the S&P 500 is the index funds. Let's say if that uh, company is giving a 13% cap and a 0% flow, $100 in the first year, right? Even though market went up to 18%, we're going to get only 113 because they said maximum interest you're going to get from this policy is uh, from this index is 113. But next year when market goes down like minus 15, right? So it it did not, because of the 0% floor, it did not uh, go to the negative. It stays where it is, right? 113 itself. And when next time when market went 10%, again, compounded from 113 to 10% is 124. It's grow 10%. But whenever market again minus five, we didn't lose money. So basically goes up and stays, goes up and stays. $100 is becoming 124. We don't need to pay tax. This is after tax money we are contributing. Plus we this is a tax advantage buckets where province showed in the column. So where we don't need to pay on the growth. We don't need to pay when we take out the money. So that's a you know a growing money with the zero percent floor. We don't get, lose money, and you gain money when the market is up up to the cap. That's a index universal life. Most of the companies, you know, depending on the index funds, they they do vary the cap. They do vary the floor. 
right? So we can, uh, based on that, we will choose uh, the right company for you guys, right? And again, you know, it's like reducing the, you know, how the like IUL index universal can be used for, uh, you know, reducing the tax advantage, right? It's at, it has a tax ad default tax advantage and you can take out the cash out and you can uh, take us as a loan, you know, you, you could use this money another way of taking a tax advantage, like the retirement income also. Let's say we are going to use a 401k you have to, uh, and after we retire, right? We need to pay tax on the 401k and we are going to get social security benefits if you're going to be here. Then we have to pay tax on that too, right? But this is an I index universal life where you could use it to you with the way we fund it. When you take out the money from the Pallai IUL, you don't pay tax on it. So you know exactly what you're getting because we tax uh, bracket also do increase, right? We think we are not going to be the lowest tax bracket by the time we retired, but we don't know, right? So why do we rely on the, you know, what tax bracket we are going to be? This is totally tax advantage bucket where you could customize it use for another source of retirement also, not just the protection. It has a, uh, you know, uh, tax advantage retirement also. So this is a comparison of, you know, 401k, annuities, Roth IRA, IUL, comparison of all these four buckets, what are the advantage and disadvantage. Annuity is something, you know, if some, if some people, you know, annuity is something like many companies don't give a pensions, right? So you could buy annuities where, you know, you will never lose the money, right? If a uh, uh, people who have a old 401k sitting or not managing, you could roll over and buy a, like annuities, pension for a life, they can set it out. Or, you know, let's say if it is a old 401k, if it is in the market, right? When they're towards the retirement, they don't want to lose a, another uh, a drop in the market, right? So you could uh, lock in your, um, you know, that asset, let's say if they're for one, uh, for old 401k is 300k, when you move into the annuities, you will never lose your principal. It all Always there is a gain will be there. So annuities are something it's very uh, popular nowadays because so many market uh, you know fluctuation happening. Some people buy the you know not everything you can uh, you can buy you know diversify your portfolio. Don't put everything into the risk portfolio, right? Not ever don't put everything in a four hundred one k. Just diversify and buy some part annuity where you don't lose your principal. So that's the annuities. If anybody interested to know more on the annuities, we could have another session. It's it's a lot more like to you know explain about the annuities. Okay, index universal life, right? Yeah, the company sets the floor, right? If let's say Transamerica gives a floor of 0.75 and the cap up to 15% in the index performance, right? Here, let's say somebody who are at the age of 30, right? 32, they started this uh, policy index universal life paying $6,000 per year, right? Uh, in 33 years, they, got, they pay total is 198. But by the time that person is like uh, 65, he'll have a growth... 948, right? So because the money is compounding and this, they're starting early. And the person is protected up to $1 million death benefit, long-term care, terminal illness, critical illness. So I'm going to explain what is long-term care, how much they pay from the life insurance uh, if this protection is added part of the life insurance. So the, he is protected from the day one up to this much, plus nothing happened to the person. Let's say he paid for a 33 years Total, he paid 198. He will have a retirement income also 948. He grew his money close to five times and he could take another tax advantage, you know, income from this also. That's also possible. So it has a tax advantage, protection, safety, growth, all into one product. So next one is long-term care. You know, this is the least, least people know about it. Long-term care, many, uh, many, many, and I'm most 99% of the Indians I talked, they said, don't know. They said, I, they heard of it, but they don't know what's the details, right? Long term, because we never think about if we're going to have a, we are going to need long-term care. Nobody knows, right? We don't know our, our health. We think we'll, uh, we'll live healthy, we'll live, you know, we'll die healthy, but we don't know things. It's not in our control in the health wise, right? Something could protect ourselves if happens, right? We buy auto insurance, we buy a home insurance thinking that, okay, if something happens to the car, something happened to the home, we should protect them. But we never think about protecting ourselves if something happened to us, right? So long-term care is something like any, it's like, a, you know, you could always, this is a popular, you know, you know long-term care.gov will explain what is long-term care. 
someone right cannot do two out of six activities right including you know like bathing dressing eating continence toileting moving in out of the bed somebody cannot do two out of six activities of daily living then it, they declare it as a long term care it could be old age it could be any sickness accident at any age right we don't know when we need it how long we need it right where is our what's our options if this thing happens right <laughs> So there is a cost associated with if somebody needs a long-term care, right? So annually, you know, these are the costs depending on where we are taking the care from, right? Uh, nursing home, home care, all those things. This do cost will increase over the years. You know, this in uh, we predict that you know it's going to be five times more than in third ten years, right? So the cost uh, again beats with in with along with inflation, the cost of cover for the long-term care also going to increase. But currently, the cost of per year this is what the cost so if we are going to get uh, only 40 percent of pay is going to you know 60 percent we are going to pay from the paycheck another 40 percent plus another extra this cost where we are getting where we are saving where we are protecting right along with our retirement so there is a misconception about long-term care you know health insurance don't cover the long-term care and medicare you know we get medicare it covers only 100 days uh, after that, it won't cover, right? So we will not have a, you know, po only portion it will cover, Medicare. And Medicaid will not qualify for it. So then, you know, who covers for it? So best thing is to buy a long-term care is part of the life insurance policies. If, we, if they can qualify for a life insurance, you can add a rider to the life insurance policy. Or if some people cannot qualify for a life insurance, we have alternative ways of getting the long-term care. There is another uh, also living benefits rider you can add it to the life insurance. It's called a living benefits. It's called critical illness, terminal illness, chronic illness. So critical illness means a heart attack, stroke, cancer, anything happens. There is a money can be used from the life insurance. Terminal illness also, if anything happens, they get 90% of the face amount when the, from the day one. So these are the riders part of the life insurance so that they can, uh, you know, take the money from the life insurance. So let's say if somebody takes the life insurance for a half million dollar, right? Because of this rider is there, they're going to get like 2% of uh, life insurance money, like $10,000 per month, tax-free money they can take from the life insurance. So having a long-term care, you know, just in case if it happens, we have a protection, right? So that's where the, these two rider comes with the life insurance. So any questions you can unmute or, you know, we can hold on to the, we want to cover these two topics. Let's see how much time you have. Otherwise we can, uh, you know, do with the question and answer. So it's up to uh, Deepa. Praveen, you want to take over the Wilson Trust? Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And, you know, yeah, of course, we could anybody have any question, you could unmute, unmute or you guys, uh, you know, set up a session one on one. We were happy to customize it and, uh, you know, show you the what options yeah, on life insurance and uh, long term care. Generally, we give about 15 minutes at the end for question and answer. So I will cover these two topics quickly, even if it okay. is over 12 o'clock, we can we, we can stay back, we can answer all the questions. So I'll try to cover it briefly. Um, so Wilson Trust, you know, when you're talking about protection, so this is one area again, um, like Jyoti said, when you talk to families, you know, most of the families have not done long-term care. Most of the families have not done estate planning. This is one other area. So I always uh, tell this joke, you know, when, when I moved to the country, when people said, have you done the estate planning? I was thinking, you know, I'm from... Chikmolur area, you know, we have coffee estate, coffee estate in Karitar Lali. So I thought, you know, I said I never own any estate, so I don't need the plan. So it's one of the things that is um, misunderstood. So everybody should should need a estate plan uh, because if something were to happen to to you know um, to the to the parents, um, to the, the asset owners, then court will decide what will happen to the asset. Um, and when you have the minor children is all the more important you you know you have a, um, a trust document otherwise you know court will decide who are the guardians for the for the kids and uh, you should you know you should decide yourself how that's said to be distributed not the courts and if it goes to the court there is there's fees from four four to twenty percent depending on the on the complexity and also it takes a long time for beneficiary to get the get the money 
So when they talk about estate planning, um, it, it consists of financial power of attorney, um, medical power of attorney, or you know, what is known as healthcare proxy and healthcare directives, uh, wills and testament, and revocable living trust. Um, so what happens if, if these things are not set up? So if there is no will, and if you have a will, it still goes through what is called as probate process. That means it goes to probate court, court will decide, and it and, and all information becomes public. Whether you have will or no will, the information will be public and it has to go, go through the court process and it costs a lot of money and takes time. Um, because of the pandemic, a lot of these courts went to Zoom and, and all, the, all the delays in Massachusetts, now it takes up to up to two years for a probate uh, process to complete. When you have the living trust, basically you bypass all this. Um, the way you have to explain the living trust is, this is a good picture to show. Uh, you create a document where you, uh, you know, when you um, create the document, it's, it's, uh, it's husband and wife, they become the trustee for that. Then they can name successor trustee, meaning if something were to happen to both, who will take care of that? You know, they can define the successor trustees. And in the document, you define who the beneficiaries are. And in the trust, you put in all the assets you want to put in there. For example, your, your primary home, your uh, investment properties, um, your insurance, you know, those kinds of things you, you put in there. Um, as long as you are the trustee, you can you can change it. You can change the terms, um, and and uh, you can add other assets at, at the later time. And now, if something were to happen, the successor trustees will will take care of executing your your wishes. You can add uh, conditions like, let's say, your kids are younger; they are eleven year, twelve year old. Um, so, if something were to happen to the parents. Um, what happens is those assets goes in a uh, in, in a guardianship, and then when they turn eighteen, they get all the assets. Now that may not be your wish because they may not be able to decide on what to do with the money they engage. So when you when you form this trust, you can say you know they will get assets at certain age. You know it could be let's let's say twenty five percent of the money you get at the age. 18 and then the rest when they turn 30, you know, something like that. You could you could put those conditions in. And it is a um, private uh, document in the sense um, you will, you know, you can share with your close family members and the successor trustees. It's up to you, you to decide who you show this document to. And it's it's not public if something were to happen to uh, the trustees. Uh, then as a as a private transfer, it, it goes through, uh, you know, goes to the trust. Your successor trustees will basically execute your wishes. So, and then the, the probate, why we need to avoid probate? Probate costs a lot of money and it takes a long time and causes stress. You know, you're losing somebody is always very, very hurtful. And then over and above, if you have to deal with all the, all the financials involved in that, following with the banks and you know how do you transfer your assets houses um, so you can avoid all those um, all those hard things later and on the college plan again i'll i'll keep it brief uh, looking at the time um, we all know that you know if you look at us we have uh, this is one of the big burden there is it's also a big political issue now on what to do with the with the uh, college student loan. And so um, out of, you know, if you look at stats for 2019, two out of three students took some some debt and the average debt is about 30K and in most cases is much higher than that. And and college costs are growing, you know, when we sit with the families and go through uh, college planning um, and we show the projection, you know, what could cost uh, in, in 10 years, in 15 years, it, it's a lot of money. Even today, it's a lot of money, but it's it's going up. And there are two things when you look into the college financial planning. One is cost of attendance, and the other one is expected family contribution. So everybody, you know, a lot of the Indian family, heard you hear saying that, you know, we don't get any scholarship. Um, the reason for that is they go through what is called as expected family contribution, and they decide 
as a family based on your income and savings and what you have as assets, how much you can contribute. And they say, oh no, if you don't qualify, then say you don't need any scholarship on the need base. Um, and then there are a number of ways you can efficiently save. So again, this is a big topic we do. A lot of workshop on this when we sit with the families we go through um, many you know ways to avoid um, you know what do you call as EFCs so that's the the expected family contribution so you want to try to reduce it so when you you know a lot of you have gone through the the, the, the college admission process there are things they ask for that is reportable assets so if you have money in the bank uh, you know, if you have a um, brokerage account, investment account, if you have a real estate investment, all those things are reportable assets. So when college decides how much, you know, you can pay for your kids' education, that's based on the report, you know, reportable assets. However, there are things like uh, 401k, you know, that's not a report, reportable assets or your primary residence. And the popular one, you know, Jyoti talked about life insurance. Um, if you have permanent life insurance, that is not a reportable asset. So you could have investment there instead of putting that in, let's say, a brokerage account, and you know, you will have less reportable assets. So there are strategies you can use to, to maximize what you can get as scholarship and, and funding from, from colleges and reducing the college debt. So I will pass here for any questions. We have many sessions coming up like this. We do the workshop all the time. Um, please do attend. Um, you know, if you need to be added, you know, just send us a message. We'll add you for our distribution list. Um, so we are doing a youth literacy program now for uh, people, let's say, between the age of 16 to 35. So we had one session to be expect. The second session is today at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Um, and then we have one more session on 19. And then we conduct, you know, upcoming sessions, you know, basics of investing, life insurance and long-term estate planning. Uh, you saw a little bit of high level on, on these things. We go a lot deeper when you take one topic. And also we have this free healthcare power of attorney. Uh, so the healthcare proxy, that, that session is coming up. So those are our contacts there. So any, any questions on the topics we cover? So, oh, hello, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. do you have any life insurance policies for the uh, elderly parents? I mean, mm. uh, for over the age of 70 years, any life insurance policies? We do, we do offer, but um, we need to make sure, you know, we need to know the health and uh, situation and, you know, we could, you could uh, contact one of us, you know, you are me, uh, Praveena, we could, uh, you know, Based on a visa status also, are you by looking for your parents? Uh, yeah, my parent, yeah. Okay. On yeah. Green card. Oh, green card. Yeah, yeah. We do yeah. offer, we do offer uh, uh, that, uh, that um, age group also. Again, okay. uh, you know, we could connect and then we could show you the numbers. Okay. What's the maximum age? I mean, uh, after that, uh, we cannot get a life insurance kind of thing. Is there any age limit or... No, there is no age limit. They you can get as long as if it is qualified, right? They can qualify okay. for it, right? Again, health is important. They okay. should be in good health to qualify. So based on you know where they are, we could uh, you know we could we could connect one on one, and uh, we are happy okay. to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and one one thing you know, like Jyoti explained earlier, uh, uh -huh. insurance industry is very discriminating in the sense if you're healthy and younger, you get better rate. As you get mm -hmm. older, you know, rates goes up. So yeah, depending premium. on the health condition, yeah, premium goes up. So you, you can decide, you know, what what kind of coverage you need and what kind of, uh, you know, premium you're looking at. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I will connect one, uh, anyone, you know, I mean. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. So mm -hmm. our, uh, basically when I, uh, the place I work gives benefit of wills and trust. So mm -hmm. we have everything, like, I don't know how to set it up. Okay. So, so you throw, provide throw, any assistance? Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, throw work one, you know, some, uh, uh, some workplaces, they do offer a free services, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, you could check with them. Some companies they offer, they say it's free, but they are, do only will, they don't do the trust. So you understand what is will, what is trust, and uh, what are the base all estate planning. Understand first from us, then see if everything they qualify from work, you could definitely take it, it's free anyway, if it is free. See, it, it should come contain all these documents. Estate planning means not just a will, it should have a trust, it should have a power of attorney for health, it has to be all these components. Yes, it has it. Okay, yeah, yeah then uh, yeah, do go for it. It's if they cover everything, if it is free offered through work, you should do it as soon as possible. This is very important, you know, to first step in the, we always connect with the family, we always tell them, this is the first thing you need to take care of in your household. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one other thing is, um, um, the, the the attorneys that we work with, they offer mobile notaries, so they come to home. Because one of the things in when you set up your um, estate planning um, on on the revocable uh, trust, that need to be notarized. So you have to take two of your friends to let's say bank or some place. So um, if you go with us, the you know they arrange for mobile notaries to come home. So that's that's one one benefit there. But if it is our through work and if it is free, why not you know make use of it? And, and uh, but like yeah, if I need help in filling those forms, I think uh, the forms are like uh, way too much that I need to fill. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But you know there is a if they are offering from work, they will have a attorney right to tied up with that network. You could always talk to them; they can able to help you. Even if not, you know definitely we could uh, the forms and all. You know, we could connect with the attorney. You could have a talk to him. We do have a whoever attends the sessions. We could arrange a 30 minutes free consultation with a, one of our listed attorneys. You could have a, you know, uh, take those and check with them. You know, you sure. could take the guidance from them. Yeah. Yeah. We cannot hear. Somebody's talking. Yeah. This is Arun. Oh. Hello. Hi, this hi, is Arun. Yeah. Hi, Arun. Hi. Yeah. So basically, we have some standard templates from work. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we just want to start that process. How do you How do you want us to start it? Okay. If it is standard yeah. templates, it's built into it already. You could yeah. You could just you know download it. Do the estate planning. Yeah. So what's there it, what's, a... what's What should be the sequence? Okay. See, each software has a different sequence, right? So we don't know what what uh, company which they offer for it. So there will be a number, you know, whoever is offering, right? Yeah. So you could call them, or, you know, in our, uh, you know, again, I told you 30 minutes consultation with the attorney, you could, you can review with them attorney to make sure you're doing the right way, you know? Okay, yeah, We could do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. The estate planning, it's also important to make sure that you have um, a healthcare proxy, um, uh, you know, HIPAA coverage, and then financial power of attorney. And, and if you have revocable trust, technically you don't need the will, but we always suggest to have the will in case if, if something happens, if it ends up in the court, you have a backup document. So whoever you're going with, make sure you have all the coverage you yeah. need. Protection. What do you mean all the coverage? No, it should <laughs> cover the whole estate planning. Estate planning is nothing but the will, trust, okay. power of attorney for health, Power of attorney for house. What's it? What did you say? Power of attorney for house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but power of attorney for health. Health. health, health okay. Meaning that. Yeah. Got power it. of attorney for health. Meaning that. Let's say. If something you know, happens to me, my... what should I mean? Whether there will be any CPR. I mean that. Uh, no, no. Life no. saving. Yeah. Okay. No, not CPA. Let's say even my kids, so they're adults, right? Even let's say husband and wife, right? If I don't give a permission to take care of health, you know, related to anything, right? Yeah. I'm not, let's say I'm in a hospital, I'm not making I'm a vegetative state health. or something. Okay, right? Yeah, something so giving authority to someone to take care of, yeah. okay. taking a decision okay. on our health. Yeah. That's yeah. called a power of attorney for health. Okay, and what else? So the will trust power of attorney for health and what else? Financial power of attorney. So, yeah. Why yeah. Financial. Financial, financial product. Product. Yeah. So that's on the screen, Arun. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, it is. Yeah. Sorry. It's yeah, yeah. Presentation, we're going to do it. Presentation, we're going to do it. Record. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. Thanks, Praveen. Thank you, thank you. No, no, no problem. But the other thing, healthcare, one is healthcare proxy. 
vegetative state after I drain, yeah. so the, the other person can decide. The, the second part is releasing up the HIPAA uh, uh, documents, right? Yeah. So if one person is not able to decide, you may want to access the, the medical record. Yeah. Uh, then you're giving the authorization. It's technically five things, but we're combining the healthcare proxy and uh, uh, HIPAA release as part of one. Yeah. Any, and any also, other... we are, we are, uh, we are going to do the, you know, let's say, you know, this is for a parents, so you can uh, throw work it covered, right? Let's say for a kids, right? People, uh, kids who are turning 18, it's very good uh, just a document to have a power of attorney, just document, uh, healthcare power of attorney. We are going to organize with the attorney. He's going to provide the free copy to, uh, you know, to do the, you know, for kids who are uh, 18 and above. So if anybody, you know, high school kids going to college, it's very important document to have it. We're going to host the session. I will, uh, you know, send it to Deepa. Then anybody interested on that session, having uh, kids also do this pre for of attorney, you could take care of that on that session. Any other questions from anyone? Yeah. And also last thing I want to mention that if anybody interested in joining our team, being part of the business, right? What we do is we also work full time with the different firms and we do started this uh, business, right? Educational business on the side, you know, with the state license. If anybody interested wanted to, you know, join our uh, business and be part of it, we were happy to guide them and, you know, it's, it's like creating extra income, you know, along with our full-time job. So if anybody interested, we can uh, explore about the business opportunity also. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Deepavare. Thank you so much for who are attending. And, you know, um, so we are, uh, we came, I think, in person uh, for the, you know, Yugadi summer picnic. We are happy to come back again if there is a more, more audience, more educational sessions we can give. Um, so with that, you know, thanks for hosting and thanks for, uh, you know, uh, letting us do these sessions. And maybe thanks in the future, people. yeah, in future, maybe if you want to need any uh, one topic, you could do it. Yeah, the Pamate committee were here. So like you know, treated like a true guest to your houses. So that was really memorable for us. Uh, whoever we have talked to, you know, uh, we, we see that everybody needs help in some one area or the other. So it's been very good discussion with the families that we talked with as a, as a follow-up. A lot of people have contacted after that. We are we are trying to help them out. Thanks again for doing this initiative. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, Jyoti. I think uh, it would benefit information, knowledge, or kutadre. So thank you so much. Thanks a little go. So have thank a you. happy Thank season. you. Thanks. Thanks. Happy rest of the weekend. Thank you.